For as long as I can remember, I've been fascinated by strange and fantastic worlds. Worlds swimming through space on the back of a giant turtle. Worlds where the incarnation of death is just a job held by regular people. Worlds that consist of a single, unending library. It is this last world that is the focus of these videos. In the 1940s, Argentine author Jorge Luis Borges published a story about a universe consisting of a seemingly infinite library, the Library of Babel. In this library, a traveller could find anything that ever had or ever would be written. They could find the entire works of their favourite author, including books that haven't been released. They could find a word-perfect transcript of a conversation they had in private. They could find the script for this YouTube video. The Library of Babel contains every possible arrangement of letters in a book of over 1.3 million characters. Of course, the problem with being able to see everything is that it makes it very difficult to see anything. I'm by no means breaking new ground in exploring Borges' library. Like many people, my first introduction to the Library of Babel was Michael from Vsauce. Hey, Vsauce. Michael here. If you want to dive deeper into this world, there'll be links to several videos in the description below. I'm also not the first to attempt to create the library in in-game form, but I wanted to create a version of the library that felt alive, one that captured the bleak despair that I felt when I first read this story. So these videos are about how I did it. Over the course of these videos, the nature of the library will be explained in full, but only as a byproduct of showing what the challenges are in making it. If you just want to hear about the library itself, I recommend checking out some of the videos in the description. So, to start with, there's the design of the library. There's been plenty of debate about the exact layout, largely because Borges' own description doesn't quite make sense when you start planning it out. The library is made up of hexagonal rooms, each with a ventilation shaft that allows a viewer to see all the way up and down the library to the other identical rooms stretching off into infinity. Four of the hexagon's walls contain bookshelves, two opposite walls contain doorways. This part is pretty much unambiguous, and I decided that however I was going to lay out the library, I wouldn't mess with this part of the description. Unfortunately, the Unity Asset Store is completely lacking when it comes to Library of Babel assets, so I had to dust off my woefully inadequate Blender skills. The next problem is the size of the library. Smarter people than me have done the maths on the library and concluded that it would contain more books than there are atoms in the universe. Needless to say, Unity's issues with floating point errors and large scale worlds would become a significant problem. Fortunately, the immense size of the library presented a solution. I would create a small static section of the library and have the player teleported around to give the impression of an infinite number of rooms. Combined with a bit of tactical geometry to limit how far the player could see at any given time, this should do the trick. This is technically a bad method, since the library is not infinite. It's very, very, very big, but it does have a defined size. However, given the size of the library, I just need to make sure the player starts somewhere in the middle. A player could literally spend their entire real-world lives walking through my infinite loop library and never reach a point where there should be an edge. I'm really not concerned about someone's great 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 grandchild leaving a bug report on my game in 200 years time. I achieved this by placing door trigger colliders on each of the vestibule doorways and pairing them up with other doorways. When the player passes through a particular collider, they are instantly teleported to the paired doorway with that collider. This means factoring in the player's position relative to the doorway, so the transition is seamless. For the actual bookshelves, I grab some book models from the asset store and place them on the shelves at runtime, giving each of them slight variations on their position and rotation. There will have to be more consistency to this randomization eventually, but for now this would do. Now, the debatable part of the library's design comes from the vestibule. Described as narrow and containing two small compartments, one for sleeping upright and one for, well, other things, there is also a spiral staircase in this area, allowing passage up and down the floors of the library. 
There's no way of piecing together the library exactly as Borges describes it, largely because it will confine the traveller to a single slice of the library, essentially unable to move in the third dimension. They'd only ever be able to go up and down or left and right. They'd never be able to go forwards and backwards because there'd be no doorways there. Additionally, the closest solutions to his problem tend to include a lot of empty space, which seems messy. The solution I decided to go with upgrades the vestibule from a narrow passageway to a hexagonal room of its own. Every wall in this hexagon features a doorway that opens into another library room, and the centre of the room contains a spiral staircase. This allows the player in my version of the library to travel in any direction and also means there's no unused space between rooms. With the plan decided, I needed to create the actual vestibule. I decided to leave the small compartments out for now, though I, I may add them later and just focus on the spiral staircase and the doorways. Fortunately, I found a very helpful tutorial on making precisely that. Making the world loop vertically was much simpler than horizontally, because I know that the only time the player is going to be moving along the y-axis is when they're going up and down stairs, I just had to check the player's y position. If it goes above or below a certain amount, teleport the player to the other side. This has a painful looking effect if you manage to fall out of the world, however. Finally, with this first stage of the library's construction complete, I attempted to give my model better textures, and quickly realised how bad I am at UV mapping. And this is where my version of the Library of Babel is, a dingy, oppressive, infinitely looping space full of books that you can't interact with. In the next part, I'll be making the books readable and looking at the algorithm used to bring Borges' library to life in a very real sense. Of course, if you can't wait for my admittedly erratic upload schedule, you can already search the library over at libraryofbabel.info, where Jonathan Bazile has already created a fully functional Library of Babel algorithm. So that's all for now. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing, and as always, special thanks go to my Patreons. The most specialist thanks being reserved for the Sugar Mummy slash Daddy tier supporters, who are Dave Maldeen, Reg Reed, Gabriel White, Aaron Clark, Mr. Drunken Dragon, Julian, Andrew Hansen, and Adji. That's all for now. I'll see you next time.